Good morning, Mr. Sony. Good morning, everybody. Your mic is not on, Mr. Sony, so I won't hear you. Sorry. Uh, Chairperson, um, in the first I didn't few hear you say good morning to me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, you don't wish me a good morning this morning. I always wish you a good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are we ready? Y yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Jefferson, for the first few days of this week, it'll uh, probably be yes, until Thursday. Yes, remember to speak up a bit. I know your voice is soft, so, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Carey, yes, sorry. Yes. Uh, Jefferson, for the first few days of this week, we will be leading PROSA-related evidence. And just to give you a roadmap for the week, and then I'll tell you what is to happen today, uh, we are first going to lead evidence relating to the response of Ms. Uh, former Minister Dipua Peters to matters raised by Mr. Molefe when he gave evidence and in his affidavit. Ms. Peters will be our first witness. The second big issue that will be dealt with this week, Chairperson, would be concerns raised about the contract as implemented by Verksmiths. Now there have been, we, we've got many affidavits, we've got memoranda and so on, and it is a, a, a concern that has been expressed, and the Commission is of the view, or the investigating team is of the view, that those should be aired, what, whatever the evidence is in, in regard to that. So that a decision can be yes, made. Yes, I, I remember because uh, there have been all kinds of issues raised about whether um, workmen's or workmen's appointment uh, to conduct the investigation that they conducted in uh, uh, Plaza was legal. And uh, after Mr. Montana had had given us his affidavit that. Uh, as far as I understand, still doesn't have uh, correctly completed or marked annexures. That he had raised issue. that issue again, and yes. I said that uh, uh, that issue should be investigated yes. uh, so that once and for all it is known whether that appointment was legal or not. Yes. And uh, that's what the investigators have done. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Chairperson, in fairness, I need to record that Verksman's itself has filed a, a comprehensive affidavit dealing with these, and uh, I will make that affida affidavit and its contents available to you. Yes, yes, no, that, 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 that's fine. Um, and, and from, and, from what I've read, it looks like on, on the question of the legality of the appointment, um, there might not be much in dispute in terms of facts. That is. Yes. yes uh, and is. and uh, Wurzman's in its affidavit looks at the law and says yes. that looking at uh, process SEM policy, mm. they believe that it was it, it was within the policy and accordingly lawful in terms of Section Two One Six. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, uh, the l latest affidavit that, uh, or the affidavit that I uh, read, uh, uh, as far as uh, Workman's is concerned, uh, seems to suggest that the appointment was lawful. Um, I have question marks about that. Um, but we, 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 will, we will look at it. But it looks like, in terms of facts, um, there, there isn't much yeah. in dispute. It's a question of whether if an appointment such as the one that uh, was given to Workman's um, was done in the manner in which it seems everybody agrees it was done, yes. whether that is lawful or yes. not. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's the second... Uh, area that we will be exploring. 
The third area we will be exploring, uh, Chairperson, is you might remember, and you will see from the evidence that we lead today, that the Swifambo contract, which was fourth uh, locomotives uh, at, for a contract price of 3.5 billion rand, there, were, there are two reports. One is a preliminary report done in 2017 and handed to the police at the request of the police, but paid for by Prasa, and saying that these persons who are named in this report probably need to be investigated, and here's all the information. They were then told, the, invest or the, the, the forensic investigator was told, that his next brief would be in respect of Siangena, and that's a 2,8 billion rand contract. After he filed his report on, on uh, Swafambo, he never heard from the police again. So in other words, there isn't an equivalent report to Siangena, but the report that he presents will be presented to you through the investigator who will be one of the witnesses. We also have the end product of that being the report of the liquidator, the final report of the liquidator. And he will, to a large extent, confirm that what he found three years later is more or less what had been found by the investigator in 217. And the question we will be asking at some stage, Chairperson, and the Commission would need to ask us, why is it that when the police knew in 2017 that there were people who probably received these monies unlawfully, why are they still at large? And the disturbing thing, Chairperson, and it's a point that would be raised by Ms. Ngoyi, when she gives evidence, they are using those very funds to fight the liquidators' attempt to get those money. But that's the, those are the concerns we would be raising this week. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, that's fine. Chairperson, then we will deal today, uh, uh, at this point, with the evidence of Ms. Peters. And again, for your benefit, Chairperson, and for Ms. Uh, Peters' benefit, and I did explain to her legal representative that there are, in fact, four issues relating to her evidence. She has given an affidavit. There are four issues that arise. One is, you will recall there was a meeting, and there is no dispute about it, on the uh, 26th, uh, 26th of August, 2015, with the president. Was it not 20 August? It, uh, sorry, it, it is the 20th, yeah. yes. And that meeting was between the president, uh, former minister uh, uh, Peters, Mr. Molefe, former minister Khadebe, and later on Mr. Montana. We will explore what happened at that meeting uh, in relation to what Ms. Peters says. And then there are three related issues. One is the appointment of the acting CEO, uh, or the appointment of Mr. Letsao as the acting CEO of PRASA, which Mr. Molefe complained about. Then the concerns that Ms. Peters raised about the Verksman's contract, and finally the dismissal of the board. Now, I have told uh, Ms. Peters' representative that there are two different versions on those matters. The facts may be the same, but as to what moved people. And what I am going to do, Chairperson, is and it's evidence that only came up before the Commission in the last two weeks or so when, uh, Chairperson, you heard the, the 
this, uh, the, the, the concerns about parliamentary oversight. And I will look at what was said in Parliament parallel to the developments at Prasa, and at some stage would want to make submissions as to whether there was a relationship between what Mr. Molefe says where the causes or what Ms. Peters says where the reasons for the appointment of Mr. Lesello and also for the dismissal of the board. But those are the issues we will be raising. No, that, that, that's fine. Um, uh, one of the issues I thought uh, Ms. Peters would uh, also address uh, is the question of uh, the delay in the appointment of uh, Group CEO. Yes. So yes. I'm very keen to hear what she has to say about that yes. because, uh, of course, I can't remember how long she stayed as minister uh, when there was no permanent Group CEO. But uh, we, we, we know that uh, it's taken years for, for a group CEO at Prasa to be appointed. And I say, as I say that, I'm not even sure whether, as I speak, there is one, but maybe there is one who, is, who may have been recently appointed. But for a number of years, the evidence has revealed that there, there was no permanent of CEO. So for yes. the time that she was minister, yes. uh, I will be interested in knowing why yes. there was a delay in filling that position. Uh, I, I did omit to mention, Chairperson, that one of the issues I will raise with Ms. Peters is that, that the, the fact that there were uh, non-appointments in uh, senior positions at Prasa mm. was raised mm. by the Auditor General, the then Auditor General, mm. as a reason for mm. what was called the symbolic state mm. in which Prasa found itself mm. eventually. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, would this be the right stage for your? You mentioned that there are legal representatives yes. um, who may need to place themselves on record. Okay. Uh, let them sanitize before you go there. Uh, we don't want uh, we don't want lawyers to sue the commission because they got COVID in the commission. A very good morning, Chair. Good morning. And I hope the Chair is strong and well. Well, I'm strong and very well. Thank you, Chair. I don't have to ask you. I can see you're, <laughs> you're very strong and well. Yes. Um, I went to church yesterday. That's why I look strong. Oh, OK. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. <laughs> chair, for the record, Zola Majavu, I appear on behalf of Ms. Peters, and I have been instructed to place some comments uh, on record, or rather make some submissions on the instructions of Ms. Peters purely as her own observations. Yes, okay. And uh, the, the starting point is that her preparedness and determination to be on as, of assistance to the commission remains unshaken. And she wanted that out of the way for the reasons that will follow. Just in terms of chronology, Chair, she was the Minister of Transport at the time. And within her span of control, reposed 12 entities, of which Prasa is one. And the relevance of this very brief submission is as follows. 
Chair would remember that in the early stages of the Commission, some evidence was led by other people in relation to SA Express and the Mafeking International Airport. And in respect of which she received a formal Rule 3.3 and she in turn reciprocated formally. And then later there was a further 3.3 in relation to the current Premier of the Northwest Province to which she reciprocated. And then there was a further testimony arising from the evidence of Mr. Molefe, uh, and she reciprocated fully, I think, on or about October last year. And later there was another affidavit by Mr. Montana, to which she also formally responded. There may be some disputes regarding the status of the Montana affidavit, but as matters stand, she has played open cards with the commission and indicated her preparedness, one, to testify, and two, her
there is or there is an application or there may be more than one application that she has She was reserved the right to apply for leave to cross-examine, but she wanted to place her version before the Commission. There are a number of applications for leave to cross-examine and applications for leave to just adduce evidence or place one's version before the Commission without asking to cross-examine anybody that um, are being dealt with uh, right now. So soon, all concerned, including her, she will know what the outcome thereof is. So they, they, they have not been forgotten, okay. but um, it might be helpful if you were to send a note maybe to Mr. Vassoni, just to say, in terms of your instructions, these are the ones on which you haven't heard from the Commission in terms of outcomes, so that we make sure that we've got all of them. If something has fallen through the cracks, we can pick it up. So if, 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 that you, if, if you could do that, that would be helpful. But uh, we appreciate the spirit of uh, cooperation. Chair, thanks. Um, for my sins, again, we have already anticipated that I've done exactly that. And between okay. the two of us, we'll be able to, to find each other. Yes, yes, okay. And, okay. And yes, so it, yes. it is not something that I'm raising for the first time. Yes. My learned brother is, is fully aware of it. No, no, that, and I'm quite not. confident that we don't need to detain yes. this hearing any longer about that no. logistic arrangement. No, that's fine. Because then Mr. Sony can be in touch with evidence leaders in other work streams, such as... Uh, uh, the yes. matter relating to Northwest would have fallen under Edward Kate of Mayor, for example. Yeah. Uh, so she can, he can be in touch with them so that uh, we make sure that uh, nothing has fallen through the cracks. Yes. Then as a parting shot, Ch Ch that, that is firmly under control. I think there was also, we did indicate to the Commission that insofar as uh, Professor Mohoro is concerned, having perused this supplementary affidavit, he simply says, what I recorded is basically what was passed on to me, and on that, it would be silly of us to persist with an application to cross-examine him. In any event, he's simply reporting as an official. The two applications that I can tell the Commission right now that she feels very strongly about that she will wish to persist with her application to cross-examine is with reference to Mesas Montana and Molefe. Uh, others, uh, yeah. we before the next enrollment we would have resolved uh, before yes. ourselves. But we thought she is here. It may well be after she has testified today. Yes. She might recalibrate her instructions differently. Yeah. And yes. I will convey that similarly yes. to, 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 to my brother. Okay. So okay. that we can proceed on that basis. No, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Those are my submissions, Chair. If I may now. Thank you very you much. You, 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 you may sit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Sony. Would this be the right time for the, the right registrar to the administer the oath? Uh, good morning, Ms. Peters. Uh, the registrar will administer the oath of affirmation to you now. You can switch on your mic. Please state your full names for the record. Elizabeth Kipur Peters. Do you have any objections to taking the prescribed oath? No. Do you consider the oath binding on your conscience? Yes. Do you swear that the evidence you will give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank, thank you very much. You may be seated. If, if we can hear you well with the mask on, it will be fine. 
if we can't hear you, we'll ask you if you mind uh, putting, uh, uh, taking off because there is sufficient social distance. Okay, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you, Thank you for coming to give evidence, Ms. Peters. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Sony. As you please, Chair. <coughs> Ms. Peters, it's correct that you've made two affidavits in relation to CROSSA-related matters. Is that correct? It is. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sony. Just to make sure you are not too far from the, from the mic. mic because your voice is naturally very soft. So if you are far, uh, we won't hear. Okay, all right. The first affidavit, Ms. Peters, is the one you made on the 16th of October. And if you look at bundle L, it is exhibit SS22. SS22, yes. I'd, I'd like you to look at that affidavit, uh, Ms. Peters. Is that your affidavit? Yes, Chairperson. This is my affidavit. And if you look at page 13 of the affidavit, page 16 of that bundle, you'll see a signature. Is that your signature there as the deponent? Page 18. Page, if you look at the right-hand side, it's page 13, but the bundle number is on the left-hand side, it's page 16. Is that your signature? Uh, hang on, Ms. Mr. Sony. We normally use the black numbers. Are we going to follow that, or are we going to...? No, we, we, we follow the, the, the black okay, numbers. Okay, then, that's, then that's Ms. Peters, whenever he refers to any page, uh, you only look at the black numbers on the left-hand corner at the top of each page. Forget about the red numbers on the right-hand side. Okay. Okay. Are you happy with that? So, I can see a page. So, so the page he, he has referred you to is... We just refer to it as page 16. We won't say Prasa Bundle L-016. We'll yes, just Jefferson. say 16. Yes, Jefferson. Okay, all right. You have confirmed that the signature that appears before the word deponent is your signature. Yes, 100%, Chairperson. That's my signature. Thank and you. Do you confirm that what is contained in this affidavit is true and correct? I can confirm, Chairperson, that it is true and correct. Yes. Now, you've made a second affidavit, and that's in relation to allegations made by Mr. Montana. We don't need to look at that for the time being. I'm just trying to orientate you. We are not going to deal with that matter today. Yeah. So we are now going to deal with your affidavit of the 16th of October, 2020. Now, then I, I just want to allow you to say what you want in relation to this affidavit. But before I do that, would I be correct in saying that there are four main issues you address in this affidavit responding to what Mr. Molefe said in his affidavit to which you respond? And, and I just named the four for you. The or maybe one, before you do that, Mr. Sony, do you ask me to admit this affidavit as an oh, exhibit? Sorry, I, I ask a chairperson that it be admitted as exhibit SS22. Uh, did you say FS? SS. Yeah. S for Sony. The supplementary affidavit of Miss Elizabeth Dipur Peters, which starts at page four of Class uh, Bundle L, is admitted. 
uh, does it have annexures? It does, together with its annexures as uh, Exhibit Double S Twenty Two. Okay. As you please, Chair. <coughs> now, Ms. Speed, is it is, is it correct? It addresses four matters. The one is the meeting on the twentieth of August, two thousand and fifteen that Mr. Molefe refers to at the Presidential Guest House. That's the first main issue that you address. Is that correct? It is correct, Chip. Then there are three related issues, and related because Mr. Molefe says that they are probably related. And that is the appointment of Mr. Letzelo as the acting uh, group uh, CEO. Then there were concerns you raised about the Virksman's investigation, and then the fact that you then dismissed the board. Those are the three, uh, the, those are the four main issues that you deal with. Yes. Yes, now, Jefferson. I just want to, and I want to move as as expeditiously as possible. In paragraph six of your affidavit, you give the background to the affidavit. Could you briefly summarize for the chairperson what you want to say? I don't want to deprive you of the opportunity of setting out the context, uh, the context that you regard as important. Jefferson, I think if I have to start off from the statement that was uh, issued by my legal representative with regards to my uh, preparedness and readiness to cooperate and work with the Commission to be able to unravel some of the challenges that have been raised with regard to PRASA, I should, uh, through you, Chairperson, probably start by indicating that I was deployed to Prasa by former President Zuma on the 9th of July 2013. It was exactly on a Monday like this. And I had the opportunity to appraise myself with the workings of all the entities, 12 of them and two councils. The one is called the licensing council and the regulating councils that deals with aviation. And a chairperson, I would want to put before the commission that Prasa, being as big as it is, was one of the biggest actually because of the importance of the service that it was providing to the people of South Africa. It is not easy to be a mass carrier. And Praza had to transport commuters who were going to work, going to look for work, and at the same time transport students who were going to school, some people who were new qualified people who went to look for jobs. So it was a very important institution that I found under the stable, under transport. When I arrived in Transport Jefferson, transport was regarded as a family. And taking into consideration the challenges that you would find in a family, I then said to the team of men and women that we're working with, being those in the Department of Transport and equally those who were in the 12 entities, plus those who were in the councils and together with those who were external stakeholders, like the taxi industry and, and others, like the road freight associations and all those. I said to them, let's work like a team. Because in a team, everybody has got a functional role to play. Everybody has got a particular responsibility that contributes to the whole. And that is what informed our work and in Presa. I mean, I mean, in the transport stable. In engaging with, with, with Prasa, 
one realized that we were busy with an organization that was faced with a massive responsibility of modernization. They were looking at the new rolling stock, they were looking at building stations and making sure that signaling being, is being addressed. And Chairperson, you would know the importance of signaling because of the challenges that we have also seen in the past with the trains derailing, the trains uh, uh, crashes and all those. And, and many others. One of the other things that we were busy with under the transport uh, 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 stable was to say, how do we make it possible based on the President's uh, SOE Review Commission report, how do we look at trying to be able to make sure that we bring these entities together? I'll make an example, Chairperson. In the, rates, uh, the road uh, uh, branch, you had entities that were dealing with road traffic management, entities dealing with road accident, entities dealing with uh, traffic infringements, and all those. And all of them were reporting to one branch, one DDG. And it didn't make sense to have this fragmentation, and that's why there was a need to put all this together. Equally so, Chairperson, in my engagements with Prasa, we, we looked at uh, the issues that were happening, and I, I'm happy to indicate to you that because of the contribution of Prasa to an important draft policy that was before government since 2005, the rail policy, we could be able to finalize that rail policy. And today we have in the Department of Transport a rail policy that speaks to the challenges of 100 years back and also futuristically looking into where do we take rail in this, in, in this instance. So, Chairperson, in dealing with the, the, the issues under PRASA, you, you, you need to really have a more bigger picture of a company, PRASA itself, which had subsidiaries, Autopex, Intersight, Prasa Cress, which was dealing with properties and all those, quite a number of others. The others was dealing with buses because they were transporting passengers on the road, on the road as, I mean, on the road as well as on the rail. So we were very excited at that particular stage that we are entering an important, important phase in the passenger rail space. And Prasa was that catalyst that instrument in the hands of the African National Congress government to make it possible that we can then be able to achieve that. So I wanted to put that into that particular context, Jefferson, that we were already at another plane, ready for probably taking off, I would want to say. Equally, the rail policy was going to address the challenges of a situation that exists in our country where Part of the network that Prasa trains are running on belongs to Transnet, and part of the, the other network belongs to, which is about 20% of the network belongs to Prasa, and about 80% of the network belongs to, 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 to Transnet. Chairperson, I would advise you that as part of the process of evaluating the challenges Prasa faced, look at what happens in Bramfontein in the morning when goods trains get preference to passenger trains. And the rationale for the rail policy was to bring these two together. And I'm happy to say there was convergence, there was working together, Prasa uh, uh, and uh, 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 Transnet was working together. But equally so, President Zuma had a responsibility to be the national, the, the, the AU champion for the North-South Corridor, looking at the network from Mombasa to Devon. And Chairperson, if you look at the ch challenges that happened recently that Minister Mutsualidi was talking about, the, the, the kilometers and kilometers of trucks that were waiting at Bait Bridge, you'd, you'd also understand that it was one of those things that led to us to review these institutions that, or these parastatals or SOEs that were operating under transport. 
where we took a decision that CBRTA must join the BMA. CBRTA chairperson is the cross-border road transport agency to join the, 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 this thing, so that we can look at a way in which we reduce the trucks from the road and put the trucks and put the goods on the rail. So I'm, I'm bringing this background so that I can help even myself to, 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 to take you to the point of the issues that we, we are raising here. Because if we just look at these issues in isolation, we don't get the full picture of what it was that we are dealing with. I acknowledge, Chairperson, that the issues that are being raised here under paragraph six, as indicated by Advocate Sony, is exactly what I, I said in response to the matters that were deposed by Ndati Mulife. And I thank you. Now, you emphasize, and I could just look at paragraph 6.4 on page 6. This is the, the uh, black page 6. I wish to emphatically deny that I was used by anybody to aid state capture in general and with specific reference to PRASA. You say I was never involved myself in the award of tenders. And at paragraph 6.6, .6, you say I never protected or sought to protect uh, anyone accused of wrongdoing from the rule of law or any other applicable process. It, that is your position, that and, is my and that's what you've come to say to the chairs. Yes, chairperson, that is my position. Now, Ms. 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 Peters, I just want to ask you, you are saying all of that because you read into what Mr. Molefe said in his affidavit that these are the accusations he made against. Is, is, is that, I'm just trying to understand why you would say that. I'm saying this because in his affidavit, he does mention individuals, institutions of government that he believes were responsible or were a, a intending to be instruments for state, for, 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 for state capture. So I want to indicate, and even today here, indicate that I have never been influenced by anybody to be, to either determine tenders, both Mr. Mulefe and later on probably Mr. Montana would indicate that I have never ever participated in processes, in tenders, in any of their establishments or even in Prasa itself. And Chairperson, I would also want to vouch that the 12 entities that I spoke to can also vouch for that, that it was not my culture, it was not my uh, 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 style of work. And, 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 and fortunately for me, as, as, as a deployee of the African National Congress, I had an opportunity to be deployed in various areas of responsibility, Chairperson. And anywhere in those areas of responsibility, I've never been a person that determines, because it was the ANC government that consciously resolved that politicians should not participate in tender processes. So why would I, being a politician, want to be in that particular space? But also, Chairperson, if I, as a politician, participate in tender processes, if there are any comebacks, what recourse would, be, would those who are aggrieved have if I have already been implicated or a... a, a, a I don't know. Or, uh, well, implicated what is, is the right word. If I have already an Hamen and Yale story, and mm. I'm sorry for the Africans. Mm. Okay. Ms. Peters, I want to be fair to you, but I also need to be fair to Mr. Molefe. Let's forget Mr. Montana for the time. Mm. I've read his affidavit very carefully. He's never made those allegations. These allegations are of a different nuance. His allegations, and I'm going to take you through them, are that by some of your actions, this is what he alleged, you allowed people to stop matters that a person concerned about corruption across would, would not do. 
Now, I just want to place that in context, so that we don't, we, we don't deal with matters that are not before this commission. Chairperson, that is the views of Mr. Malife, and unfortunately he has not cross-checked with me on those particular issues. So, in my response, I was responding to what was in the document before me, not something that I was sitting and discussing with Mr. Malif. So, just against that background, I want to deal with the first issue. This is the meeting with President Zuma on the 20th of August, 2015. You have set out in paragraph 8, that's paragraph 8.1 to 8.6, your response to what Mr. Molefe said. Is that correct? Yes, Chairperson, that's correct. I confirm I was invited to the meeting of the 20th of August. No, no I'm, I'm asking a different question. I'm asking that in paragraph 8, the whole of paragraph 8, you respond to what Mr. Monta what uh, Mr. Molefe said happened at that meeting. Is that correct? Yes, Jefferson. Now, I'll tell you why I I'm have sorry, to Sorry, before ask... you proceed, yes. Mr. Mr. Sony, uh, have I got Mr. Molefe's affidavit here in this bundle that Ms. Peters is responding to here, because I would like to compare. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, or is, do I have it in this bundle, or is it somewhere it else? It is bundle D, exhibit SS6. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we did like, give you a registrar. I, I would like to, so one can compare. Now, Ms. Peters, can I just say to you that when you look at the affidavit of Mr. Molefe, starting at paragraph 74 and ending at paragraph 92 on page 24 of his affidavit, he deals very fully with what happened at the meeting. You said it starts at paragraph... Uh, paragraph 74, 74 Chairperson, at uh, page 20 on the right-hand side of bundle D, SS6. Uh, You'll see the heading at the bottom of that page, Chairperson. Yes. It says, former president... Zuma's attempt to intervene. Yes, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. Oh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> now, Ms. Peters, um, um, I want to again ask so that we are not at odds with each other. Mr. Molefe goes into some detail in what happens at this meeting. Your response is a general response. Now, let me just say so that you are not taken by surprise and we have a roadmap for where we're going to. This is what Mr. Molefe's concern was about the meeting as expressed in the affidavit and as expressed when he gave evidence. So I'm going to give you that context and then ask you to respond to each of the allegations. This is what he says. The background to this, to... to the uh, uh, attempt by former President Zuma to intervene is this. Mr. Lucky Montana had resigned, the board had accepted his resignation, and there appeared to be unhappiness about the fact that the resignation had been accepted, and Mr. Molefe saw this as a meeting by Mr. Zuma to cause the board to revisit its decision. I'm telling you what Mr. Molefe's stance is. And the importance of that in respect of the, these proceedings, Ms. Peters, is this. And I'm going to ask you about it. Why does a president 
intervene in a decision of a board to accept a resignation of that board's or, or that SOE's CEO. That was his question. And he raises it, he says he raised it at the meeting itself. So that's the context in which I'm going to ask you to respond to this. And at the end, Ms. Peters, if we don't, if it doesn't emerge from them, I'm going to ask you whether you shared the same concerns or not. Jefferson. I had an opposition, uh, opportunity during the period after the resignation of uh, Mr. Montana and the acceptance of the board of the resignation of Mr. Montana. As a member of the executive responsible for transport, out of courtesy, I informed the president but I also said to the president, I have made a request to both Mr. Montana and Mr. Molife to stop their public space because they were going back and forth in the public space. Mr. President Zuma said to me, he cannot speak directly to Montana, but he knows somebody who is very close to Montana. And he then said, if you can speak to Minister Jeff Hadebe, he can then talk to Lucky to stop it. That is the context, Jefferson. With regard to the meeting, yes, there was a meeting on the 20th. And at that meeting, I never got the impression that there is a conscious decision by President Zuma that Lucky Montana or Mr. Lucky Montana must return to his position, which he had resigned from. In Lucky Montana's input in that meeting, he made a statement which might have given Mr. Mulefe an impression that probably somewhere where I was not part of, there might have been a discussion to the fact that Lucky will come back because in his reply to what Mr. Mulefe had said, he then said, if I go back, which was something that I dispelled in that particular meeting. Unfortunately, uh, 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 Honorable Chairperson, even in Mr. Mulefe's affidavit, he does indicate that that meeting was inconclusive because the president was exhausted and we left without any conclusion. So if you are in a particular space, everybody has got the right to draw his or her own impression of what the objective was. Probably because of president calling in a, a Mr. Montana into the meeting who was now an ex-CEO, he might have then, Yena Montana and Mr. Molife probably, had the impression that that meeting would result in Lucky returning. And, and if I'm given an opportunity, I think, a uh, 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 Chairperson, before the resignation, I just need to give context to, to, to this one. Before the resignation of Lucky Montana, I think it was right the, the year before, towards the end of 2014, Mr. Molefe informally did tell me that the group CEO indicated to them as a board that he will be leaving. And they made a request to him that they have just arrived. It, I don't think it will be good for him to leave them at that particular time, if he can give them extra time and all those stuff. And that is why when the resignation happened, I was a bit taken aback because I knew that discussion, which was an informal discussion. I didn't take it as a formal, uh, official decision on my part because Mr. Molife was just briefing me that they had uh, this discussion. And, and incidentally, Chairperson, he said a very good thing, which I subscribe to. Mr. Molife said, 
it, 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 it will be a, a, an injustice to the development of this country to lose some of these young black executives, which is something that I subscribe to. And me and him were at one with regard to that issue. And it, the, the meeting of the 20th, incidentally, the anniversary of the UDF, uh, uh, it was uh, not intended on my part. Then I want to correct something, Chairperson. I was appointed by President Zuma, invited by him to serve in his cabinet. And when I'm called by the president to a meeting, I don't say, why are you calling me? Because the day he called me to appoint me, I didn't say, why are you calling me? And why are you appointing me? So I, I, I didn't see anything wrong because it was not the first time I was called by the president to a meeting. And in any case, Chairperson, there were various instances where I personally had made overtures to the president to request for his ear on matters of the areas of deployment I was at. So when the president gives you an opportunity, sometimes you grab it because he was a busy man. And when I got there, okay, according to the affidavit of Mr. Limili, he says, when he went to the gents, he saw Lucky Montana. I didn't see him. He said he saw him. And so when he was invited to the meeting, I think Mr. Malife was aware that Lucky is in the premises. So for me, Chairperson, I, I think in that meeting, I didn't get the clear sense from the president that Lucky Montana should go back. What I got was Lucky Montana indicating that if I go back, so it means it was his wish. Mm. He, he wished that the board should, maybe he should have been upfront to say, mm. uh, my resignation was a bluff. He tried to rescind his resignation, but mm. the board then said, no, you have resigned and that's it. Okay, okay all right. Uh, Mr. Son, you may proceed. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, these are important matters and uh, uh, they affect people in different ways and an opportunity such as this maybe Miss Peters has been <laughs> looking forward to for quite some time. Yes. Okay. Uh, she might uh, tend to say quite a lot in relation to a brief question. So Miss Peters, uh, uh, Mr. Sony will try and uh, limit you to answering the specific question <laughs> at, at the end. Uh, uh, if there are matters that you might feel uh, are important that were not covered properly, uh, he might give you a chance, I might give you a chance, but your counsel is here too. He will be noting, and he knows your version, he knows your story. He will know if uh, you, there are aspects that haven't been covered properly. So I don't want you to say you are being <laughs> stopped from having your say, but we just have to strike a balance in order to use the time properly, but at the same time be fair to you. you. Okay, all right. My apologies, Chairperson. Okay, all right. And, and um, Mr. Sony, before you proceed, I, I wondered whether there would be any good that would be served by establishing exactly where, where the divergence is between Ms. Peter's version of what occurred or what was said in that meeting and what Mr. Popum left says. Um, it may be that you, you are planning to deal with it in a certain way. I see, as you said, that Mr. Mulefe goes into quite a lot of yes. details as yes. to what happened. Yes. And he did say that it was a meeting that took, I think, over six hours so, or something yes. like that. Yes. And Ms. Peter's um, version is much more shorter. But yes. it's important to know which aspects of... Uh, of uh, Mr. Molefe, she might be taking issue that's, with that, that are important. That's, that, that's what I intended to. Okay. Because, okay. Chairperson, and and it it will affect if 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 
what he has said is not disputed by yes. Miss Peters, yes. then it will accept the inference. I mean, it will influence the inferences mm. that can be drawn mm. uh, as he drew them. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's that that that's that's fine. Okay, Miss Peters, and and mindful of what the chairperson has rightly pointed out, we must stick to the, the main issues. You've dealt with paragraph 76 where um, uh, Mr. Molefe says he was told that Mr. Montana and Mr. Roy Moodley were the and what Minister Hadebe said. Is there anything in relation to paragraph 77, 78, <clears throat> and 79, and 80 that you disagree with? 79, of which? Of, the of uh, Mr. Molefe's affidavit. Can I be given a chance, Chairperson, to go yes, through Yes, you that? can have a look. 78? Well, 78... Do you say 78, Mr. 70, uh, yes, 78, 79, 80, and eight, uh, sorry, and 80. Well, it, it might be helpful, Mr. Sony, if you just tell, just, her, what, just tell her what, what Mr. Yes. Murefe yes. says. Yes. Also, it will benefit the public, then they know, because they, are, no, they sure. don't have an affidavit yes. to look at. Yes. So, Mr. Murefe says that an impression was being created by Mr. Kadebe that he was playing golf and he regarded golf as more important than meeting the president. Is, is, is that what happened that Mr. Molefe, uh, sorry, Mr. Kadebe said, I tried to call you, but I was told you were playing golf. Can you recall whether that happened or not? That's a paragraph 77. 77, yes. Hey, I don't understand this because it, do, it does seem a person like a Mr. Malifa recalling exchanges between his office and that of the office of a uh, Mr. Hadebe and the, that Mr. Hadebe got the impression that playing golf was more important to him. I, I, can't, I, I can't offer an answer for what happened between the two of them, Jefferson. Yes. Okay, can, can we then go to paragraph 83? May, may, maybe before you do that, Mr. Sony. I think what Mr. Sony is uh, asking you to do, I think what he's asking is that, according to Mr. Mulefe, at the meeting, Minister Khadebe said certain things about that had happened before, the interaction that had happened before between Minister Khadebe's office and Mr. Mulefe's office or Mr. Mulefe relating to arrangements for the meeting. So as I understand it, Mr. Sony is saying, Mr. Mulefe says Mr. Khadebe said the things that are mentioned here and uh, created the impression that Mr. Mulefe regarded playing golf as more important than coming to a meeting with the president. So the question would be whether you have any recollection of... Uh, Minister Khadebe, giving the background about the interactions that may have happened between his office and Mr. Mulefe's office uh, in the context of the invitation to, for Mr. Mulefe to come to this meeting and whether uh, it, 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 it's, as far as you are concerned, it's justified to say an impression was created by Mr. Khadebe that Mulefe they thought playing golf was more important than uh, going to a meeting with the president. Jefferson, before that meeting started, there were a lot of pleasantries that happened between the gentlemen that were there. I'm saying the gentlemen because I was the only lady. The gentlemen that were there, 
And some of those are things that I would not recall now. And it was, they, they, they usually make their own jokes there. In fact, uh, to one statement, uh, uh, Mr. Khadebe said to Mr. Mlefe that there are people who think that I'm closer to Lucky than you, and yet I'm closer to you than Lucky because Ubum <laughs> Konki Wam. Okay. I had to go and ask what is Mkonki, and then I was told was what is Mkonki. Yes. So I, I, I mean, for me, those were not the things that were said in the meeting yes. when the meeting had started. So yes. I, 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 I don't recall some of those. Yes. Because if people stand there and chit chat, and then they go there and they they mm. laugh and they do all those, and mm. by nature, President Zuma likes making jokes before he starts a formal engagement. So it was all those type of things. Mm. So me, I, I really, mm. sometimes, I could say anything to about whole. Yes. Were you told that Umkongi is somebody that uh, the Rome's family sends to the rights family for purposes of negotiations of Ilobolo? Thank you, Chairperson. Is that what you were told? Yes. Yeah. Umkongi for the transcribers will be UMK. H O N G I. Okay, all right. Proceed. I'm just giving you an gist that the the the, the 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 nature of the meeting before it started. So mm. I would not recall this one of the correspondence between the secretaries because I did not have sight of of that, and I don't remember hearing Mr. Khadebe making reference to that exchange. Okay. All right. Mr. Exxon. Right. Can I ask you to look at paragraph 83, uh, where Mr. Molefe says that you had told the meeting that Mr. Montana was fighting the war. Is, is that what you tell the meeting? Okay. I agree, Chairperson. And then paragraph 84, that he then asked Mr. Zuma to explain the protocol that was being applied, where he said that the protocol would have been for him to invite the minister and the minister to invite him as the chairperson of the board. Did that happen? I don't recall, but I think there was reference to the procedure yes. of being called to the meeting. Right. And then Mr. Uh, Zuma then said that he had invited Mr. Montana to the meeting. Is that correct? In other words, did Mr. Zuma tell the meeting that he had invited Mr. Montana? Yes, he did say that because we're in his premises and he, he, he convened the meeting. Yes. <clears throat> then he says that at paragraph 88, Mr. Zuma said that Mr. Montana was very knowledgeable about rail transportation and he should not be lost to the country. That we, meaning the, I take it, Mr. Montana, yourself, and, and Mr. Molefe, should sort out our differences and bring Mr. Montana back as group CEO. Yeah, I, I don't recall it. You'd remember this meeting happened on the 20th of August, and we never had minutes of the meeting. So I don't recollect this thing. You see, that is the, the real issue, but can you say it didn't happen? I'm, I say I did not, I, Jefferson, I cannot recollect the, yeah. the exact statement of bring back Montana back as the group's chief executive officer. At a later stage, I will give a context of a discussion with regard to Montana. Okay. Yes, okay. I, I think that uh, it's important to just explain to you that as you answer the questions, um, remember that there will be there is a difference 
between I don't remember, because that means I don't remember whether it happened or it didn't happen, or I don't remember whether so-and-so said that or not, and saying, no, that did not happen. I, I deny that. Uh, so-and-so did not say that. So it will be important that uh, we know when it's a situation where you can't remember whether it was said or whether it happened, or where you say, no, no, I'm clear it did not happen or it was not said. Okay, all right. You, you say that in the context of this, I you can't don't remember. remember. That was said. Okay, all right. <clears throat> um, I think Mr. Machava wants to say something. Let them sanitize first. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, I do not wish to interrupt my learned friend and Julie, but there's an observation that I have made, and, and I think I'll be failing in my duty if I don't place it on record and seek a way in which we can yes. assist the Commission. Yes. You see, in, in some instances, my learned friend puts a proposition mm -hmm. uh, which, by its nature, is open ended. Mm -hmm. And dealing with a political animal like my client, Mm. it invites her also to go south yes. when it's not necessary. And I say this with the greatest of respect. Yes. In other instances, she is invited to comment on paragraph 40, this and that and that, mm. which forces her then to read the mm. paragraph mm. in order to understand what it is that her attention has been drawn to. And it's mm. not assisting the proceedings. Mm. And my request would be, without being prescriptive on how mm. my learned friend wishes to mm. conduct or rather lead the evidence, mm. if a comparison is drawn between what Mr. Molefe said mm. and her response, mm. then she must be pointed to that mm. as opposed to reading the one version. Because what happens is that mm. she then takes time to read what she would have said, mm. which is natural because mm. It, mm. she doesn't want to be seen as contradicting her own version. Mm. And I'm simply asking that perhaps it mm. could be, this is what Montana, or this is what Molefe said in relation to you. Mm -hmm. And this is what you said in your, in your affidavit. Mm -hmm. You stand by that response so that if we're reading through affidavit by affidavit, let's compare apples mm -hmm. with apples. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, at the rate at which we're going, I'm afraid you're not going to, to make progress. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the chair was quite right in one instance to say, mm -hmm. summarize what he said in there, even for the benefit of the public. Mm -hmm. This is a public official mm -hmm. whose delay mm -hmm. might send a different message from a body language point of view. So I'm, I'm simply mm -hmm. making that plea to say, mm -hmm. how do you ask this witness mm -hmm. to explain why would a president do mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. Perhaps it could have been this is what he said the president did. Do you subscribe to that view or not? Mm. Then you get to hear what she has to say mm. on that particular mm. point. Mm. I just wanted to place yeah. that on record, Chair. Okay. And right. my apologies for interrupting my yeah. friend. Okay, all right. Thank you. Chairperson, let me explain a particular difficulty with what my learned friend has raised. Mm. Ms. Peters was given the affidavit. She knew what Mr. Molefe's version is. She has given a general response, and that is why I asked her right at the outset, this is your general response. I want to ask you specific things. The matters that I am asking her are about matters she didn't address in her affidavit. And I'm going to submit, Mr. Jefferson, that those are all vital matters having regard to the context I've described, namely that Mr. Mont, for example, we at page 86, he said that he, 
He specifically, Mr. Molefe says the president specifically said he wants them to sort it out so that Mr. Montana is brought back. Now, the context is important because the witness says she didn't get that impression. Now, if, she, if this is what was said, then clearly Mr. Montana, Mr. Molefe was quite correct in drawing that inference. And that is why one needs her version about each of the matters that I'm trying to raise and I'm trying to limit them to get to the crux of the matter. But the one observation I accept, Chairperson, is mm. instead of referring to a particular paragraph, mm. I should set out the gist of what that paragraph mm. says. Mm. But, but your, your response to Mr. Machava's uh, concern is simply that you can't put her, you, you can't tell her what her version is or from her affidavit in regard to the matters you are focusing on that because is, she has not responded she, to she them. She has not. Yeah. That's the point. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, all right. Uh, I think Mr. Machava will understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Let's take the, yes. the, the tea adjournment as, and as then uh, we, we'll, we'll continue. Uh, it's 20 past. We are going to resume at 25 to 12. As you can. We are jammed. All
I wonder whether, Mr. Stoney, it might not be a better way of uh, dealing with this matter to proceed from the premise that she read, uh, Ms. Peters read Mr. Uh, Mulefe's affidavit. And when she responded in her affidavit, she was fully aware of the full version that uh, Mr. Mulefe put up. Yes. And if there are uh, certain matters that you believe she did not respond to, you can uh, uh, ask her whatever you might wish to ask yes. arising out of that. Yes. Um, because she, she has provided a certain response, yes. and she obviously had uh, Mr. Mulefe's affidavit in, yes. in, in responding. Um, but <clears throat> obviously, there may be specific matters that you want to, to raise, yes. uh, but the position is that she has given a certain uh, answer to it. Yes. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Ms. Peters, now, in, you've, you've heard what the chairperson has said, uh, Ms. Peters, that effectively this is your response to what Mr. Molef has said. You had his affidavit, you've studied it, and you responded to it. So this is your response. Yes, Chairperson. Uh, and we can accept that as the position. Yes, Chairperson. Right. I just want to then ask you, in relation to the following issue, which is not re uh, uh, addressed in your affidavit, whether you recall that it happened, and that is at paragraphs 91 and 92 of his affidavit, where Mr. Molefe says that after Mr. Montana made a presentation, it was clear to him that Mr. Zuma wanted Mr. Montana to be reinstated as Prasso's CEO. Of course, that's not what Mr. Zuma said, but that's the impression. Mm -hmm. Is that it, That's not an impression you formed. Yes, Jefferson, I didn't form that impression. Okay. Then I want to ask you this then. Just look at paragraph 92 where he says that he invited Mr. Zuma to address the board. Did he do that? Did Mr. Molefi uh, invite Mr. Zuma to address the board? Well, it, 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 might, it might help. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. interrupting. It might help if you if you put the, the full, the full, uh, that the, the thrust the, the, of the that whole, paragraph yes, to yes, her, because as, as you please, it might help her remember yes. if you give more details of what Mr. Mulefe says in that paragraph. No, sure. Uh, yeah. I accept yeah. this. Mr. Mulefe says in paragraph 92, he invited Mr. Zuma to address the board and explain why he, that's Mr. Zuma, had a problem with the decision to release Mr. Montana as the CEO after the board had accepted his resignation. Mr. Zuma didn't take kindly to the invitation and uh, the fact that the board was not uh, simply prepared to accept uh, Mr. Montana as the, C, uh, as the CEO. And at about two o'clock the following morning, the meeting had become about had lasted about six hours. Uh, Mr. Zuma f uh, fell asleep, and that's when the meeting ended. Yes, Jefferson. If I recall, Mr. Malefe did make an indication that he would appreciate it if the minister and Mr. Zuma could visit Prasa and address the board, primarily because of all those other issues that were happening around that time. 
Sorry, Ms. Peters, would you take off your mask? I understand the recording is not clear. Thank you. I forgot about it. No, no, no. That's it. Thank you. I was saying, Chairperson, that at that point, I remember there was an indication from Mr. Malife that he would want uh, Mr. Zuma, the president, to visit uh, Prasa. But he went further to indicate that they are to look at the different developments that were happening. In fact, at that particular time, there was also a process that I had initiated to invite the president on a side visit to some of the projects, in particular the modernization program. So I, 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 I took it in that context that obviously when the president visited, because the president was busy at that time visiting different SOEs, and Prasa was not visited yet. So I took it in that context. But let me ask you this. Mr. Molefi says, I invited Mr. Zuma to address the board. That did happen. To, to visit the board and address the board and see some of the projects and explain why he had a problem with the decision to release Mr. Montana. Jefferson, I don't have a recollection whether it was instructive in that manner, but the invitation was sent out. To address the board. Yeah. And it's... Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry, sorry Mr. No, Sonny. No. Um, your recollection is that indeed Mr. Mulefe did invite Mr. Zuma, and I think you go one step further and say, and the minister, minister, was it was he referring to to yourself? Oh, okay, he did ask, invite the president and yourself to visit Prasa and address the board. But your recollection is that in addition to that. He also spoke about the minister and the, or the president seeing for himself certain developments. Is that correct? Yes, Jefferson. Yes. As to the part of the paragraph where Mr. Mulefe says uh, he asked Mr. Zuma to address the board uh, so that he could explain uh, why he had a problem with the board's decision of releasing Mr. Montana or accepting his resignation. Do you remember that part having been said, or what is the position? Jefferson, remember, Mr. Montana, was, his, con his contract was going to end in November, if I'm right. And the board then released him earlier. And it was at that point where Mr. Malife said, that because Mr. Montana had resigned, and uh, he was sub he had requested Yena himself, Mr. Montana, that instead of leaving in November, he would then leave the end of the financial the next year, which was going to be around March. So the president then said, "But why did you re re release him earlier than that March?" So Mr. M uh, Mulife then said, "You will invite." The, the president to go and address, to be informed by the board on what their rationale was. Because I think Mr. Mulife, uh, 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 to his credit, during the, that period, there was a view that he's running this show himself alone. It is a Mulife uh, uh, show. So he wanted to spell that, that it is not a Mulife show, but a board show. Um. Okay, okay, all right. Mr. Sony, continue. <clears throat> As you. So, Ms. Peters, I, what we know is that Mr. Molefe and Mr. Zuma discussed the board's acceptance of Mr. Montana's resignation. That was discussed at the meeting. Mr. Molefe informed the president of the process that led to the end. At the meeting? 
at that meeting. Yes. He gave, remember, Jefferson, can I give a context? Uh, maybe before you give that context, please don't forget what you wanted to say. I wanted to say earlier on, as I recall the evidence, Mr. Montana, Mr. Montana wished to leave Prasa, um, I don't know whether it's March or there are yeah, about, uh, but the board asked him to stay on yeah. for a period of six months, I think yes. it, it was going to be. But ultimately, the board released him around July 15 or June 15. 15th. Yeah, 15. Mm. And uh, my understanding of Mr. Mulefe's evidence is that the, the, it was this release of Mr. Montana by the board that uh, was being, that's part of what was being discussed at the meeting. Is, is, that, is that your recollection as well? Can I just give an indication, Jefferson, that we were all given an opportunity to say our say. Yes. And uh, the president had not arrived at his response mm. when exhaustion took over. Yes. Yes. But, but uh, my question is whether it accords with your recollection to say part of what was discussed at the meeting was the board's decision to release Mr. Montana uh, around July 15. The rationale for releasing him. That, uh, that the rationale for releasing him earlier than it, the intended date of a... Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. And then, Jefferson, also the public space. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Mr. Sony? Yes. <clears throat> so I just want to leave this with uh, put this proposition to you it's the last sentence of paragraph 92 where mr molefe says i left the meeting deeply concerned that the president of the country was personally interfering in the operations of prasa when the issue at hand clearly felt uh, fell within the purview of the board number uh, paragraph 92, it's the last sentence of that paragraph. Did you entertain such concerns? Jefferson, like I indicated, that everybody uh, raised their issues. And then... If this is the impression that Mr. Mulefe left the meeting with, it is his impression. But like I indicated earlier on, there was a, that indication in his input when he closed after, I think, Lucky had spoken, and when he was dispelling some of the things that Lucky had said, and then he then said at the end that, him as the chairperson would want to invite the president and the minister to visit Prasa uh, 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 House and meet with the board and meet with executives and after that go on a field visit or a site visit. And that, that's, that's, that's the, the end if I have to, 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 to recollect everything that happened in the meeting. And if Mr. Lefe left the meeting deeply concerned. I think he, he, he should be correct if that is the impression that he got. So, are you in a position to say, or are you not in a position to say, nothing happened in that meeting that should have given him that impression? In other words, are you able to say, well, he, he says he got that impression, but uh, I think nothing happened or was said that justified that impression. Or are you going to say, look, I don't know, it's the impression he got. Uh, I'm not able to say whether it was justified or not. Or, well, I can understand his impression, you know, if they, they, that the impression he got. I just want to know who, what your own understanding Yes, is. Jefferson, I can understand his impression. Yes. Because when 
Lucky was speaking. He gave a litany of all the things that he did since deployment in the transport sector. And even up to where he left. And even in my own view, there was a statement that he made at the end, which created an impression that he is wishing to return to Prasa. And I'm saying that based on other activities outside this particular meeting. There was, in, even in my own view, an impression of a wish on the part of Mr. Montana to return to Prasa. Because there was a statement that he made that he says, if I can be allowed back, this is what I can do to take this organization further. And it was at that point that I spoke and indicated that the board has, he applied for his um, end of contract, the board uh, accepted it, and unfortunately, because of the relationship between him and the board, it was then fast track, and that's it. But also because there was lobbies outside, outside, not necessarily in this meeting, outside, because the outside, the external factors also has bearing in whatever we can think of. The, the lobbying that you refer to that you say was happening outside, uh, and, and therefore not necessarily in the meeting, but outside, was it a, 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 was it a lobbying for his uh, uh, return to Prasa, or what lobbying was it? There was lobbying for him to return to Prasa, and he was actively lobbying. Yes. Yeah, and himself, he was acting, uh, actively lobbying okay. to return to Prasa. Okay. There were those that uh, gave him a hearing. There mm -hmm. were those that did not encourage him. Yes. And, and I think he was aggrieved by the many also who did not encourage him to return, who yes. were not necessarily uh, in favor. Yes. But he, in essence, my own impression was that he submitted his resignation probably expecting a different outcome, maybe mm. expecting the board to say, oh, please, don't go. Mm. But unfortunately, the board then accepted mm. and then said, "We will let's give us an additional six months. Mm. And before the end of the six months, the mm. board then... Mm. You mm. see, my own view outside now, outside the Praza establishment, mm. but as a minister, mm. and seeing what was happening, mm. I, I, I thought that because mm. there were marches by mm. people... And, 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 and calls for mm. him to return. Mm. Others obviously saying his return has, is in their best interest and mm. all those. Mm. But in this particular meeting, mm. that's why I'm saying the external factors might have had a bearing mm. on the impression that mm. even at the meeting, mm. because Lucky in his statement mm. made reference to the fact that if I am allowed to go back, and it is at that point that I then said the mm. board's decision must be respected. Mm. Mm. Um, Mr. Sonny. As you please, Chairperson. <clears throat> now, the speed is before I deal with the next set of issues. That's the appointment of Mr. Collins Letzelo yes. as as Lee the Tua. acting CEO. Just a correction, sir. Chairperson, Lee Tswalo. Oh, Lee Yes, Lee yes. Tua. Well, I, I, I always say we must all try our best. I know yes. I'm not uh, I'm not the best. At Maybe for purposes of this process, we can allow advocates only to say call No, I'm going no, to try No, but it's, it's, it's not complicated. It's, it's, it's easy. So, yes. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Now, that's the one issue. The second issue is the concerns you raised about Verksman's, and the third issue is the dismissal of the board. Now, before I go into what Mr. Molefe alleges... Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Sonny, you, are you moving away from the meeting? Yes. Okay, all right. Now, let, let me uh, ask uh, some questions on the meeting. Mr. Mulefe says this was a, a meeting that took uh, very long. 
I think he says about six hours. I think he says uh, it was meant to start at five, but it ended up, or at four or three, I can't remember, yeah, but three. it ended up starting at 6 p.m. and uh, dispersed around 2 a.m. Uh, because uh, uh, the president fell as asleep, uh, uh, or as you put it, he was exhausted. Um, is, is, is that number of hours, does it accord with your recollection of how long the meeting took, more or less? I don't know what time we were called for the meeting, but I remember that there was a stage where Mr. Mlefa said, this meeting is taking too long to start, I'm leaving. Yes, and he said And I said to him, Dr. Mlefa, Patsona Bari Pile Dioya We've been called, and let's come and hear what we've been called for. And then when the meeting started, unfortunately, I didn't take time yes. to record what the time was. Mm. But the meeting did start late, later than it was intended. Mm. And it did finish around that time. 2 a.m. And uh, unfortunately, like we say, exhaustion took over. Mm. Yes. And so, so you would not quarrel, or would you, with his estimate of, uh, of from 6 to 2 a.m., 6 p.m. to 2 a.m.? I would not quarrel with that, because yes. for, 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 for some of us who've been working in the government environment for some time, uh, there used to even be a, a, a joke made around that you know what time you start, but you never know what time what you time finish. Yes. So, yes, Chairperson, the meeting ended very late, around yes. 2 a.m. Because oh. I remember I arrived at my place uh, of residence around past three. Mm. Mm. Okay, all right. And he also said, which you probably, well, you might not, might not have been in the affidavit, but he also said in his evidence that uh, Mr. Montana was allowed quite a long time to, to address yet uh, a prepared speech or notes. Or, and uh, I asked him how long he thought Mr. Montana spoke. Uh, if I recall correctly, he said he, his estimate is that Mr. Montana took about two hours. I hope Mr. Sony, I'm right. He, he did, yes. Yeah, he, he said he thought Mr. Montana took about two hours addressing the meeting, which I, I thought was quite a long time. Uh, is, is that, uh, does that accord with your recollection, or would you take issue with that? Yes, Chairperson. He spoke for a very long time. He literally gave us the history and state of Brazil. Yes. Address. Yes. <coughs> Did anybody, either prior to the meeting or at the meeting, state what the purpose of the meeting was? Thinking now the president, maybe, or maybe Minister Jeff Hadebe. Did anybody say why you were all assembled there? What purpose was sought to be achieved? by this meeting? I want to say that it, it, it was a very clear indication because I had made this overtures to Minister Jeff, Jeff Hadewe about him intervening with a talking and cautioning lucky about the public space. I didn't know that we are going to be meeting with the former a, a group CEO. I knew that there is going to be Mr. Malife myself, the president, and, and uh, Minister Jeff Herebe as in his capacity as the minister in the presidency responsible for performance monitoring and evaluation. Yes. And, and <clears throat> I also believe that because I had then said to him, I would want him to caution like it to stop these public spats because I'm speaking to Mr. Malifa on the other side. Then he, he would have succeeded in that and probably give us an indication on, on, on that. But other than that, there was a lot of activities also 
in the presidency that Minister Jeff Kharibi was busy with that involved work from Prasa and a, a, a Transnet, which was related to the, he was the envoy of the president on the AU a North South Corridor a, a project. So I did not read a lot into, because the meeting did not have a written agenda. It was a meeting with the president convened by the minister and the president, and that was. And, uh, and the question of the public spats between Mr. Mulefe and Mr. Montana, was that discussed at the meeting as, a, as, as an issue, as opposed to being mentioned in passing? It, it was raised as, as an issue that um, they, 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 they were weakening, they had weakened the organization because these were two leaders from the institution. But now that the former group CEO was no longer there, it meant it was another matter that probably Minister Jeff Hadewe and, and, and the president was dealing with him with regard to that. At that time, he was already out, and and in 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 that because it was the remember he left around uh, mid July, and it was already the twentieth of August. So. But um, uh, you know the meeting took quite long, and uh, one is trying to understand what was really covered in such a long meeting. Uh, the impression I got for, I get from Mr. Mon, Mr. Mulefe's evidence, and maybe it's more than an impression, uh, is that an important part of the purpose of the meeting appears to have been that the president wanted the board to revisit its decision to release Mr. Montana or wanted the board to rescind that decision. And, um, and Mr. Mulefe's evidence is to the effect that that is why he made that invitation to the president to say, Mr. President, uh, I'm, you, you must come to the board yourself and uh, address this issue because he was uh, not prepared himself to say in that meeting that the board would rescind the decision. Uh, he says that's the context, that's how, that's how it came about that he invited the president to come and address the board. And that seems to me to tie up with your evidence that says at that meeting there was an issue of there was a discussion of what the rationale was for the, the board's decision to release Mr. Mulefe. What do you say to, the, to that? Come again, Chairperson. <clears throat> I'm saying that uh, Mr. Mulefe seems to suggest in his evidence that uh, an important purpose for that meeting uh, seems to him to have been that the president wanted the board uh, to rescind or revisit its decision to release Mr. Montana. And Mr. Mulefe says it was because he was not prepared himself there, sitting there as chairperson, to say, okay, we'll do that. It was because he was not prepared to say that, then it, that he then invited the president to say, the president should come and address the board on this issue. And I'm suggesting to you that that evidence by Mr. Mulefe, that suggestion, seems to tie up with your evidence that one of the issues that was being discussed was the rationale for the board's decision to release Mr. Mulefe early. Mr. What do Montana. you say to that? Mr. Montana, Chief. Mr. Montana, yes. Yeah. What do you say to that? I'm saying it gives me that impression that Mr. Mulefe's evidence may well be correct, because otherwise, uh, wh why, why would he invite the, the president to come and address the board 
um, on the rationale of the board unless somebody wanted the board to revisit or rescind its decision. Chairperson, I'm trying to page through the, the, the notes that I had made. For, that you made. For that particular meeting and because of time I'm struggling to get because as you can see, I've got lots of notebooks that I used to use at yes, the time. Uh, so in one of the notebooks, I do have the, no the actual notes that give an indication of that particular meeting. And how, if you can give me just one... No, we can, we can give seconds. you a chance to get the, the notes that you wish to have. 30, 30 seconds would do, Chairperson. Mm -hmm. Like I indicated, Chairperson, Mr. Molif, not Mr. Molif, Mr. Montana gave us the history. That's why he spoke so long. The history of his work in Prasa and before then in a the predecessor of Prasa and how he transformed it to be Prasa. And uh, before then, his work in the department as uh, the advisor of uh, Minister Khadebe and, and, and all that a long history. And also he went into the, 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 the history of the modernization program how he got involved and what it is that uh, he was he was doing there and that in itself chairperson if you are sitting there listening you would have realized that you are sitting with somebody who is building a case on why that organization needs him and if there is an impression on the part of Ndate uh, Mulife that probably before our meeting there might have been a discussion but in our meeting it was not there but if the impression was created I then came in after Montana spoke to dispel that to say you had resigned and the board accepted your resignation and I support the stance of the board on this matter it was a very short statement, and, and I concluded on that. And unfortunately for, for President Zuma, as the person who, in whose premises we were, he had not had a chance to even reply and say anything with regard to these particular issues, except for at the point where he was opening the meeting. So that meeting was inconclusive. It didn't have an agenda. There's no minutes. And there was no follow-up meeting to, of, of, of that nature, except the invitations that we did to the president to visit Prasa, which he did do at a later stage. The, but the discussion that Mr. Mulefet talks about in his affidavit, uh, which he says, or let me put it this way, the discussion about the rationale for the board's decision to release Mr. Montana. Did it happen after Mr. Montana had um, made his presentation or before? The discussion about the rationale for the board's decision to release Mr. Montana. Did it happen after Mr. Montana had addressed the meeting or before? If you are able to recall. After...
Montana addressed the meeting. I spoke and Mr. Malife spoke. So I don't re recall if the president, because the president was visibly exhausted. And, 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 and truly speaking, at the end, uh, even uh, 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 Mr. Malife was saying, this is fruitless. So we quit, quit, quietly all left. <laughs> we all left because <laughs> without saying goodbye to the president <laughs> without saying goodbye to the president uh, I didn't know I, Jeff, uh, in terms of being in the organization they are my seniors they should have woken him up So and they didn't do that so when this, this president he didn't so we just quietly <laughs> okay, all right. But just to make sure uh, that uh, you are able to say what you might wish to say, I'm, I'm making this proposition to you that on the face of it, it seems to me, and it's a pity because President Zuma might never respond to this in, 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 before the commission. On the face of it, it seems to me that there might be credibility in Mr. Mulefe's version that the meeting did discuss Mr. Montana's possible return to Prasa and that uh, President Zuma, Mr. Zuma, uh, spoke in favor of the board allowing Mr. Montana coming back. I'm saying on the face of it, I haven't made a decision, I have not made a finding. I'm saying on the face of it because you have a situation where somebody who no longer has anything to do with PASA, who has left, or, you know, comes back and is allowed a lot of time to address the president, two ministers, and the and the and the and and chairperson of Prasa board. But he he, he has nothing to do with Prasa anymore. And uh, and as you say, in his long address, he in effect, as I understand both what Mr. Mulefe said and what you are saying, he seems to have been saying. Look how well I've done as a Prasa Group CEO in the past. You have certain problems at Prasa. I can, this is what I can do about those problems. And it seems he implies, if he didn't say so expressly, if I can be allowed to go back. That seems to be the thrust of the purpose of his address. And um, uh, Mr. Mulefe says, the president said at the meeting something to the effect that this is, this is talent that should not be lost uh, to the country. And then there is, um, and he says the president wanted the board to revisit or rescind its decision to release Mr. Montana. And both, and then you say, yes, the meeting did discuss what the rationale was for the board, board's decision to release him. So if you look at all of that, it seems probable that somebody must have said, you people, the board, must revisit your decision to release this man. He shouldn't be lost to the country. Um, and, uh, and then when you link that with Mr. Mulefe's evidence that I invited Mr. President Zuma to come and address the board on the rationale, on his rationale for, for releasing Mr. Montana. It seems quite probable that the position must have been that uh, President Zuma wanted uh, Mr. Montana to be taken back on these facts. Are you able to comment on that? If you allow me, Chairperson, mm. I could probably build on to what you're saying. Yes. 
Chairperson, when the board of Brasa through the chairperson, Mr. Molife, informed me in early 2015 about the imminent departure, that time they had not even discussed the dates of a Lucky Montana. They were a couple of months as the board in, in office. And he told me that he had a discussion with Lucky, and Lucky indicated them that, to him that he has been with Prasa for a very long time, and he thinks it's about time that he goes. I then discussed with the political stakeholders, because at that particular time, Chairperson, there were four CEOs who were in the same position that Lucky and the Prasa institution or Prasa company was in. Who, whose contracts were about to end. And I then, in my discussion with the political structures, I indicated to them that we are now at this point in the country where we've got, and I'm happy to indicate to you, Chairperson, the National Transport Master Plan, we've got the rail policy, we are working on the single transport economic regulator, which was going to consolidate regulation of the entire transport sector. And now we've got people with institutional memory, experience, and expertise in these particular fields. And it is important that as the African National Congress that has invested in these individuals, we should not lose them to the, the the private sector, where they would come back and be consulted at exorbitant amounts to government. I even said, in my history of deployment, in my experience of deployment, I have realized that if you deploy people, like for example, we have just concluded on the rail policy, we have concluded on uh, uh, the master plan. If we take new people who are clean slates, the implementation process will take very long. And Chairperson, you would have realized the transport, National Transport Master Plan was under consideration since 2015. And after 10 years, it was adopted by cabinet. It became you mean a plan. From 2005. 2005. Yeah. And now it was 2015. And now we had it in place. The single transport economic regulator, equally so. We're busy with different uh, uh, instruments to make it possible that we can reform and transform the transport sector. If, Chairperson, you would allow me, I can submit some of those documents as supplementary evidence. So I discussed with them, and I discussed equally with the President of the Republic to say to him, Mr. President, you've got this expertise in the transport sector. And you wouldn't want to lose it. In fact, I even advised the president that in your advisory team, some of these people can be considered for that. And I still maintain, Chairperson, that the challenge we have with service delivery in the country is primarily because we chop and change. Today you do this, tomorrow it's the poor doing this, and the poor doesn't know where you ended because sometimes our handover is not even amicable. So it was for that reason that I spoke to the president. I even advised him that as the chair of the North-South Corridor, some of these people would be able to help you. One of them was the former CEO of the uh, 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 Cross-Border Road Traffic Agency, and incidentally, my last day in office, I signed off some of the functions to RTMC as part of that reform, so that they can then concentrate on dealing with the challenges of Bait Bridge. We even signed an agreement with the Minister of Zimbabwe on the 16th of June, very important day because we believe that we're talking about the future of the continent and the future of our region, SADC, the countries in the SADC, we're complaining about the long of time, length of time that these countries that are land, landlocked struggle to get their goods to Durban because they have to pass through, to pass through South Africa. And the challenges they have with the, 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 the attacks and the hijacks of the, the trucks on the entry. 
We're busy with part of that, of the, of that plan, Jefferson. So I said, and I, uh, I can mention the agencies that we're dealing with. It was Sunral. If you look at the infrastructure in roads in, in Sunral, we are communicating with provinces and municipalities that they give over some of their roads to Sunral so that the funding model we are working on... I'm going to stop, to stop you. <laughs> I'm going to stop you. Uh, but you, you might get a chance to, to, to deal with those issues. But I understand you to be saying to me in response to the proposition I put to you based on Mr. Mulefe's evidence. I understand you to be saying you understand what Mr. Mulefe is saying uh, and you can add by saying Given the discussions that you have you had had with the ANC, I think that's what you mean, and the president about the need to retain some of the expertise, you 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 would not you would not be surprised if indeed the president wanted Mr. Montana to be wanted the board to consider reviewing its decision or revisiting his decision. Is my understanding of what you are saying correct? It could be correct, Chaperson, but it could also be speculation, because Chaperson, like I gave an indication, if there's anybody who's at fault, it's then me who went to the president to say, we can't lose these people. And yes. in my saying we can't lose, in fact, there was no mention to the president mm -hmm. about Lucky going back yes. to, in that time, he had not even left. Yes. We were looking discussion. at him for other areas based on yes. his experience. Okay. On how do we utilize yes. this experience, this capacity, this knowledge? Some of them had even gone internationally to do benchmarking studies, to yes. do understudies on how we address some of these challenges in the country. Yes. And I believed that now we have a rail policy. You need this person called Lucky Montana with mm. his knowledge and expertise mm. in rail. Even if it would end up, have ended up him being my advisor, incidentally, Chaperson, in conclusion, mm. I once even joked with him, mm. Mr. Montana, mm. and I said, if you look at the, 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 the country futuristically, one day you will be the Minister of Transport. Mm. Does it mean that I was lobbying him for mm. him to be Minister of Transport? Mm. I was saying it because I know that he knows the sector. Mm. Okay, all right. Uh, I... I, I Uh, can I, would it be fair to say you don't take issue with what Mr. Mulefe says in his evidence in this regard? Or can I say you do take issue? I don't take issue because it is him, his impression. Yes, but it goes more than the impression. But also the, 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 what I put to you, you know, the, the, the rationale for the board's decision being discussed, the invitation that the president should address the, the meeting. You, 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 you understand the logic around that? I understand, Chip. Yes, okay. All right. Mr. Sony. Yes, it is, it is a matter of concern I want to raise with you based on something you said to the chairperson. While the chairperson was asking you questions, you were going through books that you said constituted your notes to that meeting. Now, sorry, is that your, is your answer yes? Yes, chairperson. Now, you knew that you had those notes at the time you made these, uh, this affidavit of yours in response to what Mr. Mulefi said. Jefferson, in my affidavit, I did say that there are documents that are all over that I'm trying to locate. And I even still indicate here that I'm prepared to give supplementary documents to the other uh, um, information that has since come to the fore. The, the, the Secretariat of the Commission would remember that there are certain documents of Cabinet that we even had to request Cabinet to declassify 
before we could present them. And I think, Chaperson, uh, I, I, you know, uh, Chaperson, just uh, to clarify this, I left the office on the 30th of July, not July, March 2017. And now I've got to read through these as I pick them up. And some of them then informs this particular LSD. So the recollection of the meaning, I even indicate that it would be from memory. And now that's even some of these notes, they are not official notes. They are not just my notes as I scribble when the discussion is unfolding. So if uh, the, 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 the evidence leader believes that I should have attached those notes, I would request the chair, but I don't know whether they will make sense because yes, it was no, shorthand. No, no, that, that, that's fine. Any material that wasn't available to you when you prepared your affidavit, which you believe uh, is relevant or important for either your version or somebody else's version, uh, feel free to, uh, uh, your, your, your counsel will, will, will talk to you and affidavits can be made or supplementary affidavits where you can attach them. Um, uh, there would be the question of how important they are to be looked at. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Peters, Thank uh, you. I'm afraid I'm making a different point and I must make it. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Bring the mic closer. Yes. No, it Sorry. is on, but uh, you, your voice was... Yes. Uh, so, uh, Sorry, Chapers. Was uh, I'll, low. Uh, I'll just repeat the, the proposition. I'm making a different point, but I must make it. You see, when I asked you about your response to Mr. Molefe's affidavit as it appears in your affidavit, the one we're dealing with today, I said to you that it's not in much detail and it doesn't contain a response to everything he said. Now, the reason I'm putting this proposition to you is before you made your affidavit, those notes were available to you, and I'm only making the proposition, I'm going to ask you why. You obviously didn't consult those notes when you made your, uh, your affidavit. Is that correct? Jefferson, like I've indicated, some of these books, this, they are in boxes and whatever, from my, my I managed to get records that were relevant to the sections the commission referred me to. And at that time, Chaperson, I had not got an opportunity. In fact, Chaperson, I must give you an indication that I had to put aside weeks to just search through everything that is a paper, where I see a word prasa and put it aside so that I can surf through it to be able to get some of this information that, that I have. And that's why earlier, Chairperson, I said to you, I am prepared to file supplementary affidavit based on the information. And incidentally, some of the information I even got last night from the Department of Transport. So it, 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 in essence, it shows that we get information as and when it is possible. And, and also I want to give thanks to uh, Honorable Minister Mbalola and his team for this helpfulness for them to be even sitting on weekends to be able to surf through this information to help me to get to some of the information. And that's why my plea, Chairperson, is that I be allowed to give supplementary affidavit so that the information that is sought by the evidence leader can then be brought to your attention. Yeah. But I just want to upfront indicate some of the notes, like I indicated, if you don't sit with me, they will not make sense to you. But yes. they will make sense to me because yeah. I made those notes. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Peters, there, there is no request for the notes. You are more than welcome to file a supplementary affidavit based on notes, and we will accept the correctness of what you say. It's, it's just that I didn't realize that there were those notes that might have been available, but you've explained why you didn't look at them. Now, let me ask you, this meeting took place 
on I'm the, sorry I think mr. Majava wants to say something uh, what is if your if your mic and uh, the ones attached to the desk it does it not work this one that one just press it oh I'm okay. told this one works oh okay all right you can you can use that one yeah Ch chair I think maybe we should not step off this point because an aspersion intentional or otherwise seems to be cast and and I feel quite strongly about it chair would remember that the only time during which Ms. Peters reached the back for her notes was when chair probed and said Firstly, would you quibble with Mr. Molefe's estimation of how long it took? Six hours seems to be a lot of time. And then she explained that he gave us a full lecture about Prasa and, 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 and. And she reached to try and see to what extent was the issue of the rationale discussed. It is an issue that arose here. And it was in that context that she was paging through. I don't know if you observed, there was a time at which she asked you to repeat the proposition yeah. because you may have thought that she's not listening, but she was paging through her notes yeah. to be able to say to chair, on my notes, this particular aspect enjoyed some measure of attention or not. Yeah. I can state that the books that she, is, she was referring to were not available at the time that the affidavit was compiled. And I just needed to make yes. that point. No, 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 that, that's fine. I certainly don't have any difficulty uh, with the fact that she uh, made reference to her notes, which she says she didn't have available at the time. Uh, I don't have a difficulty. So, I'm happy then. So uh, uh, I, I didn't understand Mr. Sony to be casting any aspersions on her. Maybe I didn't uh, understand, but uh, on, on the face of it, I, I have no issues with what uh, she has I'm done happy. and the explanation she has given. Yes. I, I think, Chair, it was only insofar as Mr. Sony said, I'm asking a different question and I repeated, and then he said, my concern is this. Yes. So I was simply trying to clarify that concern to the extent yes. that it is a concern. Yeah. If we left it unattended, it yeah. might have given a different impression. I didn't want to make assumptions, yeah. Chair. Yeah, okay. But no, I'm, I'm happy that we can accept yeah. it on that basis. Yeah, no, no, that's Thanks, fine. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairperson, with, with respect, you, you are absolutely right. No aspersions. I, I'm entitled to say that you, ha you may have had those documents. She's explained since. Yes. That I, I acquired them recently. Yes. But we can leave that, Mr. Chairperson. Yeah. May I? Miss... Peters, go to the date of the meeting. Now, this meeting was on the 20th of August 2015. Am I right? Correct, Jefferson. I want to ask you to please, and this is evidence that came before the commission in the last two to three weeks because it was given by witnesses who dealt with what had been happening around that period in Parliament. So I'd like you to, Mr. Chairperson, I'm going to refer the witness to certain statements made by Mr. De Freitas when he gave evidence. It's not many of them, but they, they provide a context which, in, in my submission, is an important context that what happened at the meeting should be considered against. Yes, no, no, that's fine. Before you, you do that, there's just one or two more questions I want to raise with Ms. Peters. I'm sorry, Mr. P Ms. Peters, I'm taking you back to the meeting. Do you recall whether at the time of, at the time of that meeting of the 20th of August 2015, there were already uh, allegations that were being made against Mr. Montana for relating to the time when he was group CEO of Prasa, relating to allegations of corruption and so on, and, and whatever other allegations of wrongdoing. Do you know whether 
at that time. The, the, those allegations were there. Yes, Chairperson, they were there. There were media reports. Um, at that particular time, there was a, a call from myself to the Auditor General to do an investigation based on his audit outcomes and the issues that uh, he flagged as findings, even those that he saw as repeated findings in, in the audit outcomes. Now, President Zuma at the time, I'm sure would have been aware of those allegations as well, wouldn't you say? They were in the public domain and maybe they were in reports, maybe in your report back to him you, or to cabinet, you would have raised them. Are you able to say or you are not able to say whether he was aware of those allegations? Or would have been aware. I think he was aware because they were in the public space. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, and they, they, there was a, a meeting before then where I had taken the president through some of the litigation and other uh, so-called corruption cases in the, in the department plus also in the entity. So I gave I gave him a, 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 a report. I did give him a, a, a report to that nature. Yes. In fact, to his defense, he actually gave us a proclamation for the SIU on matters, some of the matters that we had raised. Yes. I know that you have given your, your evidence about where you stood on the issue of Mr. Montana, or on the issue of... Uh, Mr. Montana's possible return to Prasa, you, you have said that you made it clear at the meeting that you supported the decision of the board to release him. Now, to the extent that, uh, according to Mr. Mulefe, President Zuma uh, wished for or pushed for or argued in favor of the board revisiting its decision to release him, uh, or sought that the board should rescind that decision to release him, which obviously would have meant that he would come back. Uh, as Minister of Transport, I would have thought that you would have considered that not appropriate to return uh, somebody to Prasa who had left and in, against whom there were various allegations of corruption or wrongdoing that had not been resolved as yet. Would, would, would it be fair to say as minister that would be your attitude? Yes, Chair. That would be your attitude. Um, yes, okay, all right. Mr. Sony. Yes, I, um, I was getting to that point, and I will, I, I will raise that question again. Okay, all right. But, Ms. Peters, you've, you've uh, said to the chairperson, yes, these matters were in the public space and so on. I just want to, though, raise with you what had been raised in Parliament and that is the evidence that was given in this commission in the last two, three weeks ago. Uh, none of us was present except the chairperson, so he will remember the evidence. And I just want to place it on record so when the chairperson is looking at the different strands, he is able to uh, put, uh, pull them together to the extent that they are connected. Can I ask you to look at Parliamentary Bundle 3, please? Yes. yes uh, have Jefferson. you got it? Yes, Jefferson. Will you look at page 368? Did you say Bundle D or 3? Uh, uh, bundle 3, Jefferson. Okay. Three sixty eight. 
Have you got page 368? Yes, chapter the, the one on the left hand side. What is oh. the page? Page 368, chapter. Okay. Jefferson, what I intend doing, and I don't intend being long, but it is important that one knows that it was not only happening in the newspapers, it was happening at one of the arms of government. So if you look right at the top, the, there is a date which is the 4th of March 2015. Do you see that, uh, Ms. Peters? Yes, Jefferson. Okay. I'll just read this to you and, and ask you if you're aware of it. It says, in the National Assemb uh, uh, Assembly plenary of the 12th of March, I, and this is Mr. De Freitas, called on the House to debate how Prasa did not comply with the processes, uh, processes and procedures in the ordering of the new locomotive's rolling stock and how this took place and the impact it had on the project and budget in this regard. Now, that was a matter that was raised in the Assembly. Were you aware of that? Yes, I'm aware of this, Jefferson. Right. Then, I'm, I'm, I'm just pleased that, that Parliament, uh, that Mr. De Freitas had raised that in the Assembly. Yes, Jefferson. Okay. Then, would you go to the next one? which is the 7th of July, 2015, he says, this is Mr. De Freitas says, that on the 7th of July, I wrote to Minister Peters about replies to my question submitted under the name of my colleague, Mr. Mbubu, about the dimensions of the new locomotives. He said, I had received the replies from Minister Peters on the 6th of May. And he then, at the end of that paragraph, says, Minister Peters, is, in her reply, stated, the new locomotives are not different in any form. The new locomotives are within the required scale. Is, was that your response to Mr. De Freitas? Jefferson, I will have to go back to the records because this has now been sprung on me. And uh, I don't remember. There were a lot of questions that were raised in Parliament. And one needs to take this, because usually there is a response and then there is an explanation yes. to the response. No, I understand. Okay, so, so you... I'll go and okay. check on this. Let's, let's leave that, though. Because this, his complaint relating to your response is based on a newspaper report which appears on the next page. If you turn over to page 369, and I don't want to read everything, I just want to read two sentences from there. Right at the top, it is said, the class Afro 4000 was the first new locomotive type to be acquired by Prasa. It was officially unveiled in Cape Town on the 1st of December 2018. That was what the report said. And then if you go to the last paragraph, it says, the Euro 4000 locomotive was designed to operate throughout Europe and is 4.264 uh, millimeters high above the railhead. Can I ask you, were you aware of this? Of this? Uh, of, of this allegation. Of this allegation. Yes. yes, Chairperson. I was aware of this allegation. All right. And there was a process that we embarked upon with RSR, which is the rail safety regulator, to find out how we arrived at this particular point. And 
chairperson, incidentally, I do even have a report because it was in the public space. That's what we usually do as a courtesy and as part of protocol of cabinet to alert the president to this particular issue. Okay. And if allowed, I can submit that documentation as supplementary. No, you, 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 you're more than welcome. Please face this side as you give those answers. <laughs> Got you, Eche. Yeah, okay. All right, on the following page, at page 370, you will see that right at the bottom, it says, on the 7th of July, under the heading Montana denies claims made in report story, on the 7th of July 2015, with 13 mo uh, locomotives already delivered and following the huge press report about the excessive height of the Afro 4000 locomotive, process CEO Lucky Montana denied that the locomotive's height was too tall and insisted that PRASA had followed a strict design review process. Now that was in the public space and that was what you knew about that as well. We I knew about this. That's part of the investigation that RSR was dealing with. Okay. But also equally, Chairperson, this matter formed the basis of some of the issues that we put in the terms of reference for the forensic investigation by the AG, and I can make that also available if allowed. Yes. Then on the 8th of July, right at the bottom, it says, Imtimkulu qualifications found to be fake. And it says, on the 8th of July, now this is Mr. Defratis reporting, the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, giving his evidence or, or his affidavit, he says, the media story broke that the head of PRASA Engineering Services, Daniel Impimkulu, had lied about his qualifications. And he then alleges that the response from PRASA was to defend Impimkulu without proving that he indeed had the pre uh, prerequisite qualifications. Now that's not a matter that concerns you. Um, I'm just saying that in the public space, this contract, now, perhaps is a good time to, to, to place on record, that this was a contract for 3.5 billion rand, is that correct? Yes, yes, Chair. It is what then became known as the Swifambo contract. Yes, Chair. <clears throat> And just again, to put it in context, that contract was set aside by the High Court, was set aside, or which was confirmed by the Supreme Court of Appeal, which found there was corruption in the, uh, in the award of the tender, and that Sufambo was a fronting company for Foslu of Spain. Is, is, is that correct? It's part of the documents that I would say are available for the commission. <clears throat> then of what we did as a department with regard to this matter. Then on the 14th of July 2015, the, the note in respect of that says that Mr. De Freitas on the 14th wrote a letter to the chairperson of the uh, portfolio committee the first was to request to summon Minister Peters before the Portfolio Committee, and the second to request that Imtumkulu be summoned to appear before the Portfolio Committee. I raise all of this because these are not matters that were happening in, in out of the public glare, and they were not happening in unofficial circles. They were happening in the House in which our laws are made. Jefferson, just a correction. These matters were deliberated on between the Jefferson and uh, Mr. De Freitas, as well as in the Portfolio Committee. And uh, Jefferson, I would not want to respond for the Portfolio Committee, because as, as members of the executive, we get invited to the portfolio committee. 
So if the portfolio committee did not invite us to come and address these particular matters, I cannot address it here, Chairperson. And, and, oh, let me leave it there. Well, then, can I ask you, in, in response to that, did the portfolio committee not invite you to address this issue as requested by Mr. Defreitas? I don't remember ever being invited by the portfolio committee. Chairperson, the parliamentary systems also operate on the basis of that ministers have got what is called a parliamentary liaison officers who sit in, in these committee meetings and would bring reports of what Trans, uh, uh, what the decisions of the committee is. So, and at times they would have access to the minutes. So if the decision is not made at the committee level that the minister must be invited, then it would then mean that the minister would not be invited. But at any given stage, ministers get invited to present the quarterly reports to support or uh, sit and, and listen in on entities when they present their reports. If the minister is not there, then the DG or the deputy minister or any other official from the department who has got relevance in whatever is being discussed, he or she would then go and represent the department. Then on the 30th, if you look at page 372, on the 30th of July, Mr. De Freitas tabled a motion in the House of Assembly require, requiring uh, raising, question, uh, raising questions about the answer you had given. And he then says, he, you, he alleges that you supplied incorrect information which you did not correct and he asked that you be called before the Powers and Privileges Committee uh, or the, that they investigate you. And he says the Powers and Privileges Committee blocked that motion. Are you aware of that? I'm totally not aware of that. And, 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 and Ms. Peters, can I, can I just, and I want to give you this assurance, none of this is intended as a criticism of you. It is merely saying that around the time of this meeting, these were the facts or, or these were the matters that were going on in the public space. It's just to give context to what happened prior to the meeting of the 20th of August. Then on the 12th of August, in, on page 372, Mr. De says that replies from Minister Peters to my questions uh, relating to Mr. Im uh, Mr. Imkumkulu, he may have given his peers the impression that he had the necessary qualifications. Can you remember giving that reply? Yes, Chairperson. Ms. Peters, now, I, I am obliged to ask. We have a 3.5 billion rand contract. This, the version everywhere is that the person who developed the scope for this locomotive was Mr. Imtim Kool. It is now said that he had a fake qualification. And you are asked, or your department is asked, to look into this. What steps were taken as soon as the department and PROSA became aware that these were the allegations relating to Mr. Uh, Mr. Mkul? In fact, Chairperson, at the time when these issues of Mr. Tim Kulu were picked up. I had instructed all entities of the department to do a skills and qualifications and competencies audit based on that 
SOE reform process that was unfolding so that we can match and place people according to their qualifications and their competencies. Unfortunately, at that particular time, we had not received the responses from Brasa. But I want to indicate, if I have to go back to this question, which I see for the first time here today, that it has, it's a matter for, for the Commission. Chairperson, if, if, if you read the question, I indicated in that, that Mtim Kulu may have given his peers the impression that he had the necessary qualification and thus, without being detected, slipped through the verification, verification process. Secondly, we go ahead and I quote, Prasa Ray indicated to me at the time, because Mtumkulu submitted his resignation, that they will not accept his resignation because they wanted to pursue criminal and fraud charges against him. And that's how I left the Jefferson. Now, this is the 12th of August, the, the, uh, your response. Eight days later is the meeting at the presidential guest house relating to the possible re-employment of Mr. Montana. Was were these issues raised at that meeting by anybody? They were not raised, Jefferson. Now, you were aware of them. Yes, I was aware of them, Chair. And, 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 and Ms. Peters, I'm, I'm sorry I must ask you this, and I, I know you'll say it's unfair, but I just ask you this because did you not think that until these clouds had been cleared regarding a 3,5 billion rand contract, the question of Mr. Montana's going back to Prasa should not even be on the radar screen. I won't say it was on the radar screen of the, 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 the of me or the ministry, or even the board. And that's why, Chairperson, I impressed at the meeting of the 20th that the board acted, Mr. Montana resigned. The board accepted his resignation. And in the process of the time that the board had requested him to stay on, there were issues that cropped up. These were some of those issues. In the media reports, the Auditor General's report, and that led to the decision of the board which I accepted. And, 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 Chaperson, the issue of uh, Tim Kulu, like I've indicated, the company did indicate to me that they are pursuing criminal and fraud charges against this particular individual at that particular time. So, the question I'm, I'm going to now, my next question in that regard is, forgetting what you said at the meeting, in your own mind, when the question, when Mr. Montana said at the meeting, but I can do so much for Prasa, Prasa will benefit from me. Forget what you said. Does it not occur to you that this might not be the right thing to do in respect of two things. One is Prasa, but in respect of having regard to proper governance, that until this cloud is, 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 is removed, we should not be seen to be putting people like this in power. Jefferson, at that particular time, and it was even in the media space, I had asked the Auditor General to do a forensic audit and lined out some of these issues related to malfeasance, corruption that was happening, and not following due process in dealing with supply chain issues at Prasa. And at the same time, there was this audit, the skills, 
and a competency audit. And at the same time, the company had given me, the company at that time was under uh, 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 Mr. Molif, had given me an indication that Prasa is busy with criminal and fraud charges against Mtim Kulu. And I left it at that chapter. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a different question. I'm saying, at the meeting of the 20th of August, Mr. Imtimkulu didn't... Uh, your voice is... Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Chair. down, Mr. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Sorry. Sony. Sorry. Yes. Uh. At the meeting of the 20th of August, Mr. Imtimkulu didn't feature. It was Mr. Montana... And you've already said that Mr. Montana was saying it may be that he can contribute to Prasa. I, I'm not asking for what you said, but I'm asking and I'm testing your state of mind. Did you not think that it would not be appropriate to take him back until this cloud had been left? Jefferson, already at the time, we had accepted the board's decision to release Mr. Montan. Yep. So, in my mind, the issue of him returning to Prasa did not arise, especially in view of the fact that I said there were four other CEOs that we were engaging on with regard to the transport sector as a whole. So. At no given stage did I create the impression that I am pliable to consider. Even when one, uh, Mr. Montana was, was lobbying aggressively for him to return to, 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 to Prasa. But there was no entertainment of all those lobbies that were happening. So I think a person is free to lobby whoever he wishes to lobby. The reality is Prasa is an entity of the state. It's not the private property of Mr. Montana, where he can go and, and, and come back as he wish. And, and there was no way in which I was going to say to the board, bring back Mr. Montana. It, it never, and Mr. Mulefe can tell that I never went to them to say, bring back Montana, because there was all these investigations that was happening in any case, at that particular time. There was a lot of investigation. In fact, the late AG once even said to me that the officials at Prasa, the functionaries that have got to provide information for all these investigations will suffer investigation -led, a, a fatigue. That's on account of the number of investigations, investigations because of the amount of fraud. Yes. Now, we can take it that this, the, the question of the propriety of Mr. Montana coming back to Prasa was not discussed. Is, is that correct? Maybe in, 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 in... No, no, no. I'm not saying that the... the uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not cutting. I just don't want you to answer the wrong question. I'm saying the propriety, not whether he should come back. We know that was discussed. But where the propriety of that was not discussed. No. I'm, I'm going to, we, we're going to break for lunch. just want to leave you with this proposition. Isn't that one of the problems that we as a country find ourselves with? That at those meetings, private meetings, we don't articulate these concerns about proper governance. I, I leave, I'm not criticizing you, I'm asking because the chairperson will want to look at what recommendations he should make in regard to this and it would help. I would say, Chairperson, the fact I, I, I'm, I'm trying to process the evidence leader's question properly so that I respond well, Jefferson. The issues of governance were raised 
And that's why, Chairperson, you would remember I gave an indication that the board, the, what the board process was. The other thing, Chairperson, was that in that particular meeting, like I indicated, there was no specific agenda. And after the long list of uh, issues that Mr. Montana raised, there was no opportunity to almost like go through each one. Because in my view, Mr. Montana was building a case for himself. In fact, when I left that meeting, I said, with the information that Mr. Montana has, I think he's, he's got a, a, a good framework for writing a book about his time and, 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 and what he has done at, at Prasa, if, if he believes that it's, it's Prasa, because I was looking at him in relation to the transport sector, because he didn't start with Prasa. So, and, 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 and I still believe that as individuals, we don't, when we are deployed in a position, it, is no, it doesn't become our fifth dome. It becomes a responsibility that you need to carry out up to where it is possible based on the laws of this country, the policies and the programs that are in place. And that is why, for me, it is, it is, it is interesting that the president has got a performance agreement and we follow that. The board had a performance agreement with Mr. Montana, and they needed to follow that. And they, these are, would be issues that also come from the supplementary affidavit that I'm speaking about, Jefferson. Well, um, Mr. Sony was saying that he is not criticizing you uh, about not raising the question of whether it would be appropriate to return, to allow Mr. Montana to return. But I do want to say this, that one of the things that I'm keen to establish is whether to the extent that I might find at the end of the work of the Commission that Mr. Zuma, as President of the country, may have done or engaged in certain wrongdoing, which um, may have been, uh, may have assisted or enabled state capture, or that may have enabled acts of corruption to, hap to happen and to flourish. I, want, I will want to know if I come to that finding, but we need to talk about it before the Commission's work is finalized, because when I make that finding, I won't have a chance to call you back <laughs> or any of the witnesses back. So we have got to say, I've got to say, what will I say in my recommendations if I make this kind of finding? So I, the, one of the questions that would arise is, was there anything that prevented ministers to say, no, but this is not right, Mr. President? in this context of what we are talking about. If, as Mr. Mulefe says in his evidence, Mr. Zuma as president in that meeting of the 20th August 2015 did push or urge the board to revisit its decision to release Mr. Montana or to take him back, despite the fact that on your evidence, he was aware that there were all kinds of allegations of corruption and wrongdoing involving Mr. Montana. The question arises uh, whether you shouldn't have said, 
apart from saying you, you support the decision of the board, which you have made it clear, you, 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 you said, but President, how could you ask the board to change its decision when there are all these kinds of allegations of corruption that have not been resolved against Mr. Montana? You, you, you understand the context. So, so, so one wants to find out those who are within the cabinet, what did they do if they did see certain wrong things happening uh, where they expected the president to do something? Or did they just keep quiet? And if so, was there an environment that made it difficult to say something? Just to try and understand what the position was. But we'll take the lunch break, maybe when we come back, uh, you might wish to say something. Jeepers, may I, before we break, just yes. ask one question which Minister Peters can look at at lunchtime. Yes. And that is, there is a distinction, because I know looking at what happens recently, the question is innocent until proven guilty. The problem here is Mr. Montana was not in Prasa anymore. He was he out. Wasn't. So it's, it's, it's a different situation where you are taking action against somebody. You say, well, we didn't know whether he was guilty. The question is, questions have been raised, and now the question is, should you take him back? It's, it's, it's a very different question. And, and it, uh, Jefferson, it fits in with, in, in a yeah. sense, reinforces the point yes. you're making. And, and, and you will remember, Ms. Peters, that part of what is said about state capture is that in certain instances, uh, those who pursued state, the agenda of state capture sought to remove certain people or officials or ministers from their positions who were not prepared to be party to any wrongdoing and sought to have certain people appointed to those positions that they believed would uh, work with them in advancing the agenda of state capture. So, so uh, when you have a situation such as the one that you have testified to, where Mr. Montana had been a group CEO of, of Prasa for quite some time, he, he left, the board released him, and there were certain allegations, serious allegations against him of wrongdoing, of corruption. And here now you get a, a meeting which is obviously approved by the president who comes and sits in this meeting and allows this person against whom there are all these kinds of allegations of wrongdoing at Prasa taking the stand at the meeting, according to Mr. Molefe, that the board must re rescind its decision and take this person back while all these allegations are hanging over the head, it, 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 it makes you ask the question, why would a president want to do this? Why? So those are the kinds of questions that uh, the Commission has to look at and, and ask. And uh, of course it would have been better if everyone who could assist us who would be able to come and assist us. So, so, so there, there, there are those questions and they might not be limited to Prasa, they might be limited, they, must all, they might extend to other SOEs and maybe other departments. So, so that just to give you uh, the full context. Okay, we'll take the lunch adjournment. It's uh, 14 minutes past one. We will resume at quarter past two. As you please. We adjourn.